Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a very special event. This is something that I have not done in quite a long time, a live unboxing. In fact, I can't even tell you, I think the last time I did a live unboxing uh, was probably my PlayStation VR years and years ago. So, today, it's time for something special. Today, we unbox the Genesis Mini. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. In all of its glory, Woo Yoshino Lover did a 200-bit cheer and said, Hey, man, what's up, Yoshino Lover? Good to see you. You're the top cheerer of the day. I'll update that in just a moment. Um, pretty small compared to the original Genesis. By the way, one thing I should tell you guys, I was there live for all the console wars in the 90s, and the Genesis had many different versions. Um, this version that they picture on the box here is actually the very first version of the Genesis. It was very wide and rectangular. Um, later versions actually were much more compact, and you may see different versions of the Genesis. That, by the way, this was also called the uh, Mega Drive in Europe and other territories, but it was called the Genesis in the United States, which is why it says Genesis here. Um, so it's funny because the mini version is the wider version. That's weird to me. I thought that they would have taken the later model versions and made that the mini, but they didn't. They actually made the mini like a smaller version of this Model 1 Genesis, which is kind of interesting. Um, and then here, we've got the Genesis game pads, which we're going to look at in a moment. I'm curious to see what's in the box here. Um, the original Genesis pad only had three buttons, as you can see. That's because the original Genesis game pad here was based off of the, the Mega Drive pad. <clears throat> the Mega Drive, uh, excuse me, not the Mega Drive pad, the Master System pad. The Ma Sega Master System was Sega's console before the Genesis and the Mega Drive, and that one was to compete with the Nintendo... Uh, like like the, the original Nintendo console or the Famicom. So, in reality, the, the Master System pad, which had three buttons plus the start button, technically had more face buttons on it than the Nintendo pad, which only had two. But then, when the next slew of, of consoles came out, the Genesis comes out with the same pad that only has three buttons, but then the Super Nintendo came out with way more. It had four face buttons and two shoulders, so the Super Nintendo kind of trumped them with their controller on the SNES, or Super Famicom, okay? But the original only had three buttons. Later on, Sega released other pads that had six to compete directly with Nintendo, but also because of fighting games. It was a big thing back then that fighting games needed more than just a few buttons. You couldn't play Mortal Kombat, you couldn't play Street Fighter with a controller like that <clears throat> without some major issues which we will be talking about when I actually explore the game, because, by the way, there's a version of Street Fighter in this console that I'll be playing to show you guys how tough it is to play it on the Genesis, why most people didn't play it on the Genesis, okay? Um, all right, I received a dollar tip from someone named Smash Me saying, just get started. I am starting, as you can see. I'm, I'm about to unbox this. Um, let's update this. And let's get Yoshino Lover up there with the top cheer of the day. Two hundred bits. Thank you. Uh, Melody Zelda resold for twenty one months. Thank you for that, Melody Zelda. And YouTube mode cheered. It said, "What's going on on the left? You keep staring in that direction. That's where my screen is. I'm actually looking at my monitor right now to see myself. Like when I say I want to point at the console, I'm looking at my computer monitor to make sure I'm actually pointing at it. That's what I'm looking at. That's where I can see the live stream over there. So Genesis Mini, very small box. Just to give you some perspective, here's the PlayStation Four controller. It's like you know, just a little bit bigger than the PS4 controller. It's a very small box, so this really is a very small version of the console. Um, pretty nice looking, pretty sleek. We'll see when I open it. Um, decent heft. As you can see, a crazy amount of games included with this thing. 42 games. Although it's kind of weird, it lists 40 at the bottom, then all of a sudden on top it says plus two bonus games. Why are those bonus games? I don't understand why those are bonus games. Uh... Why isn't it just say 42 games instead of 40 plus 2 bonus games? Like they added them out at the last minute or something. It's a good variety of titles, including some classics that probably everyone's played or knows about, like Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2. Um, <clears throat> then you've got some, some things that were cross-platform favorites, like Earthworm Jim. Um, Eternal Champions, which was one of the Sega-exclusive fighting game franchises for a while that people really liked. Um, <clears throat> Altered Beast, which is one of the games that put the Genesis on the map when it first launched. 
Uh, it actually altered Beast was the game that came with the Genesis for a long time until Sonic came out, and then Sonic was the game that they packaged with the Genesis when they sold it in stores. Um, some interesting things like Streets of Rage 2, which I, I think Streets of Rage 2 is the best one, but interesting they included 2 and not 1. So that's a side-scrolling beat-em-up similar to, say, Final Fight. Um, but this was, the again, the Genesis slash Sega exclusive one. Some really popular platformers, like I think Vector Man's on here, yep. As well as um, Dynamite Heady, Alex Kidd, and Wonder Boy. Some really good platforming. And then some licensed titles. Interestingly enough, um, Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse. I didn't think they would be like a Disney tie-in title because of the licensing fees involved, but they got it. Castlevania Bloodline. So this was a Castlevania game that in a rare turn was on a console that wasn't Nintendo. Castlevania games had always been on Nintendo consoles up to now, but now they got one on the Genesis, which was really neat. Also, uh, Mega Man Wily Wars. Again, Mega Man had been a Nintendo-exclusive character for a long time, and this was the first time that Mega Man was appearing on a console other than a Nintendo console. Um, there's just a lot of stuff here. You've got RPGs like Shiny, uh, Fantasy Star 4 and Shining Force. you got puzzle games like Dr. Robotic's Mean Bean Machine, and, um, is Columns in here? Yeah, Columns. That Columns was, like, the big Genesis slash Mega Drive exclusive, uh, puzzle game at the time. Comic Zone, another side-scrolling beat-em-up game. Um, there's just a lot of stuff in here. A lot of great titles. A few here that I never played. Um, but in general, like, I can look at every game and be like, I understand why every game is in this collection. Because they're all pretty pretty awesome and valid titles. And, you know, a little something for everyone. Your fighting games, your puzzles, your beat-em-ups, platformers, you know, RPGs. Everything you're looking for in one console package. By the way, this is selling right now for, for $80, United States denomination. I don't know if it'll stay at that price. But right now, apparently, it's a really hot item. People are really enjoying it. So, unlike the PlayStation 1 Mini that failed miserably last year, this one's actually doing pretty good sales-wise, okay? So, what does it come with? It says, ready to plug and play... Um, and I believe I, it comes with, I want to say it has two game pads. Yeah, two wired control pads, USB power adapter, power cable, HDMI cable, and the Genesis Mini console. We're going to check out all the connections and everything on it when I open the box here, okay? <clears throat> oh, a couple more shout-outs. Ben Boxer, cheered. He said, did you like the SNES better or the Genesis back in the day? For me, I like the SNES better for a couple reasons, okay? First of all, and this is just, this is su not subjective, this is objective. The graphics of the SNES were better than the Genesis. They just were. The SNES came out later and had a better graphics processor in it than the Genesis. Not to say the Genesis didn't do certain things better than the SNES. It did. If you wanted to play games that are really fast-paced and stuff, the Genesis could handle it. And a lot of uh, game developers designed certain things around the hardware of the Genesis that would run better on the Genesis. But in general, the SNES did have better graphics. And the SNES had better sound. This was one of the big things for me. I loved good music in games. I was kind of an audiophile of games back in the day. And you would listen to games like Street Fighter 2 on the SNES versus the Genesis. And it was like night and day. On the SNES, it sounded like the arcade. On the Genesis, it sounds like you're playing inside of a fucking tin can. I'm very interested to see how this is going to sound because it's in here. They've got Street Fighter 2 Champion Special Championship Edition in here. I can't wait to see how it sounds because I remember renting that game and playing it back in the day. I was like, oh my God, it sounds so terrible. I gotta play this on SNES. I can't stand how bad this is running on here. So there you go. Um, I was an SNES guy, but I owned a Genesis. I actually rented a lot of games for the Genesis. I didn't own a lot of games for the console, but I rented a lot. So, um, what the hell? Christian Weston Chandler tipped me a dollar asking me if I'm a member of Mensa because only very intelligent individuals wear Sonic t-shirts. Thanks for the dollar tip. Jessica Tim, cheers. A very good looking shirt you got there, brother. Thank you, Jessica. And Philly Buckeye, cheers. If you have two game pads, that means Jasper can play with you. Yes, I'm sure Jasper would love to play some, some of the all-time greats of the Genesis with me. Hey, why not? He can type on my, my keyboard. I guess he could play Genesis, right? And last Rambo, cheers. said, why did the PlayStation Mini fail? Because the PlayStation Mini had emulated versions of games that were bad versions, like 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 weird ROMs, PAL versions of ROMs that ran bad and had frame rate delay. And, and it just, if you're going to buy something like this, you want good versions of the games. Apparently, the, Gen the PlayStation Mini was not good versions of the games. Plus, it didn't have a, a good selection. This has 42 effing games on here. I think the PlayStation Mini only had like 20 or something. So, of course, the, you know, something like this versus the PlayStation Mini is going to be way more popular. Okay? 
This this is going for eighty dollars. This the PlayStation Mini sold for a hundred when it was new. Now you could get it for like ten. I'm not even kidding. You could get it for ten because all the stores overstocked it, especially it was going to be a big sales dynamo like the the NES and SNES Minis were. None of them sold, so they're just giving them away now. Okay. Let us now open the box and see what's inside, shall we? All right. I got an anonymous dollar tip. Someone said just open the fucking box. Okay. And M5NSX here said, do you have a tape measure? I want to know the surface area of the box. No, I don't have a tape measure nearby. Sorry, dude. I don't just have a tape measure here on the fly that I can pull out uh, at any moment. Okay. Let's get this sucker open. So it's a top, a top opener here. We've got a tab here that you pull. Nox to me a dollar. It says two bonus games because Tetris is kind of improved remaster made just for the Genesis Mini. And Darius is an arcade game that they made a port of specifically for the Mini. So there you go. Apparently these two games were not original Genesis games, but they ported them to this. Interesting. All right. I did not know that, Knox. Thank you for that little bit of tidbit of knowledge. That is appreciated. All right. So here we go. Unboxing! You get to see my noisemaker in live action. Here we go. Ready? Now hold on. I gotta forewarn all of you before we open this. You gotta be careful. This contains blast processing, the most powerful kind of gameplay processing known to man. And if you don't handle it with care, you could destroy the whole fabric of space time. All right? Blast processing is nothing to fuck with. Be very careful when handling your Genesis minis. All right, man. So here we go. Open it up. So the first thing, I open it up, there on the side on one of the tabs is a power adapter in the cardboard. That's kind of weird. All right, I'm glad that I saw that before I accidentally dropped it on the floor. Let's put that to the side. So there's your, your power adapter, very small power adapter, by the way. Okay, so here's what you see as soon as you open the box. I guess what we'll do, we'll go left to right. So the first thing here that I pull out, it looks like a USB cable. I'm assuming that's going to be the power cable for the console itself, so we'll put that right next to the power adapter. And then we've got an HDMI cable. Always nice that a console comes with the cables you need to hook it up. An HDMI cable, very nice. There you go. By the way, shout out to Master Programmer who just tip, uh, just gifted 10 subs to the channel. 10 sub gift bomb. Uh, so congratulations to the following people. Vazia... My Wife's Cat, Mocking Jaybird, Dangerous Dave, Throwaway1172, Typical Alden, Cam Jersey, uh, excuse me, Typical Den, Cam Jersey, Prince Anime, Banjoki335, and Evil Shadow Ninja. You all just received gifted subs. Congratulations and thank you, Master Programmer, for that support. All right. So those are the wires, it looks like. Then we've got the Sega Genesis Mini, what looks like the instruction manual on how to hook it up. We'll probably check that out later. Okay. Shout out to Philly Buckeye who just cheered. So my sister couldn't handle the power of blast processing. Now I'm an only child. <laughs> I told you. You got to be careful. In fact, see, you think this is a normal shirt? This is actually a, a uh, radiation protection shirt because blast processing could mutate you on the fly. That's why I'm wearing this tie-dye shirt today. Kevin the Frog just cheered. He says, check out my mini. I'm bawling so hard like the mayor. Okay, then. Cliffy Biro gifted five subs. He's, he dropped a five sub bomb to B Bod His Java Kyle 333, Best Frog in the Bog, Doppelganger, JCL50, and Mr. Five Twitch. Congrats to all of you on getting gifted subs. Thanks for all the support today, everybody. An exchange factor tipped me two dollars. Said I forgot what games it comes with. Can you repeat them all? Well, I didn't read them all. What we're gonna do is we're gonna unbox. Then I'm going to hook this up, and we're going to do a walkthrough of everything on the console. So don't worry. On this very segment, this very stream, I'm going to be doing that for you. So we're going to look at all the games, okay? Thank you, Exchange Factor, for that $2 tip. <clears throat> That's incorrect. There we go. Okay. Let's continue with our unboxing. So, we've got... What appears to be gamepad number one. And then right next to it, what appears to be gamepad number two. Now, I'm not going to take both of them out because I'm only going to need one for today. But, gamepad, let's see how the gamepads hold up. 
to what I remember from the original Genesis game paths, okay? So this is interesting to me. And the reason I say that is because um, there were different versions of the original Genesis pad that were different colors. And I owned one that had not red on the buttons at all. But it actually, I believe it, the buttons were, I want to say had white letters. And everything around the D-pad was also white. So I think I actually got a later, a later version of the Genesis. Uh, I did have, I did have the original Genesis that was the, the, the rectangular one. But my Genesis controller didn't have the red stuff on it. And I think they changed that later on. I think the original one had it and then they changed it. So I think what they're trying to really do is emulate the very original Genesis controller with this. Okay. So you got your standard eight-way directional pad. Um, it feels pretty good, honestly. Like the pad feels pretty smooth when I touch it. Um, your start button to pause the game and or other features, which we'll talk about because each game has a different feature for start. Some, some games don't even pause on the Genesis. Um, and then we've got A, B, and C buttons. Three buttons, okay? And they feel pretty good. They click, they feel pretty responsive. On the back of the controller, it says model number MK-15500. Sega, Games Company Limited, made in China. Of course, made in China. And it has a special contour to the controller. So the Genesis controller feels pretty good in your hand. It always did. It feels kind of natural for your hand when you grip it. It feels like, ah, it feels, fits your hand with a contour. But this is the Model 1 Genesis controller. No shoulder buttons. No extra buttons anywhere. Just the 3 and the start button. Okay? USB, interestingly enough. Back then... They always used to be... Oh, God, I forgot what they actually called that connection. All controllers back in the day had this weird connection with a bunch of pins. And this is a connection that was commonly used on a, on a PC. And the Genesis controllers, incidentally, used that pins connection. Now everything's USB. So not surprising, okay? So there's the controller. The other one, I'm assuming, is, is identical, okay? Pretty nice. <clears throat> All right. Let's see here. Uh... DSP, please tip me a dollar. Says, turn off chat and open the box, then do your shoutouts afterwards. No. But thank you for the dollar tip. Qbert tipped me three dollars. Says, stoked for the unboxing. Have you ever considered sporting any other styles of facial hair? Mustache alone would look better on you. No. Thanks, guys, for your tips. Okay. Ben Boxer Charity says, can you play Moonwalker on the Genesis Mini? I checked it out. It doesn't come with it. Uh, probably not then. I doubt they're going to allow you to add anything to it. Philly Buckeye Cheers said, do you think if they did an Xbox 360 Mini, they'll all come out with the Red Ring of Death to keep it authentic? That would be pretty funny. Kevin the Frog Cheers says, you look like a corpse. Lay off the booze and pork. Thanks very much, Kevin, for the compliment. And Little Clean Meat Cheers says, does the box feel good? Is it quality cardboard? Oh, yes. Only the highest of quality of cardboard. It's, it's a standard cardboard box. <laughs> come on, guys. All right. The one thing everyone wants to see is the console. All right. Look at this. This thing is small. Like, way small. Okay? In fact, it is the size of my PS4 controller. For, for perspective reasons, it's exactly the same size as the PS4 controller. Okay? Alright. Open this up. There it is. <laughs> Pretty silly looking, man. It is so small. So there's your Genesis Mini. Now, a few things about the Genesis. Um, it actually had this volume control. See that right there? There's a volume control switch on the console. I don't know why. No other console at the time had this. But you could actually lower or raise the volume of your Genesis Mini. Or excuse me, of your original Genesis. Dependent on what you wanted it to be. I don't know why they did that back in the day, but they did. They actually had that ability on the Genesis to adjust the volume level. Most people would just adjust the volume level on their TVs, but this one had it built into the console for whatever reason. I thought that was a feature people would want. Um, there's your on-off switch and your reset button. Right there. Manual re Back when consoles had manual reset buttons where you just wanted to reset the thing to reboot another game, you just press reset, boop, you're done. Okay, none of this, oh, shut down the console properly, fuck that, unplug it, hit the reset button, whatever you want to do, it all worked back in the day. Um, it's got a piece of plastic over it, 
So let's remove the plastic. <clears throat> okay. Now, what's funny about this, it now says at the top of the ring there, high definition graphics. It didn't say that, I think, on the original Genesis. Because they weren't HD graphics back then. 16-bit. There's a light. That light will light up when, when the console's actually on. Now, it's got a slot. It actually has a simulated slot for games, but there's it doesn't go anywhere. You know, that's the slot you would put the cartridges in, but there's nothing in there. Back in the day, you would actually see a line of pins, because when you plug in the cartridge, the cartridge has pins that line up, and that's how it would plug in. So it has a slot just for silly purposes. It doesn't actually do anything, okay? On the front of the console, we've got two USB ports. That's got to be for the two controllers, all right? And on the back of the console, we've got HDMI out as well as USB out to power the power adapter. And it actually has an HDMI uh, logo there for whatever reason that they put on the, the Genesis mini console. You see that? Um, nothing really special anywhere else. There's no vent. At the bottom, they've got a couple you know, little vent ports there, probably because as it heats up as you play it. But in general, nothing else. Now, other thing, you see this right here. How it looks like there's an arrow and it looks like this pulls out. Well, it doesn't. That's just solid plastic, I believe. Let me double... Oh, shit! Never mind. Take a look at that. It actually comes off. There's nothing there. Okay. That's a nice touch. So, on the original Genesis, all right, there was an expansion port on the side of the Genesis. That's what this protected. Okay. So, the original Sega Genesis had this expansion port. And when they originally released it, no, it didn't work with anything. There were certain peripherals that they had been planning to use for it, and not many were ever released. But then, after a couple of years, they released the Sega CD, and what you would do is you would take that off. Which now I can't get off. I broke it. There we go. You would take that off, and there was a port here, and you would plug the Sega CD into the side, so you would put Genesis cartridges in here, but then the CDs would boot over here on a disk drive. So it was a separate drive this whole thing would sit on top of and plug into to create the Sega CD, okay? So that's funny that they actually put that on there because it has no purpose, but that's cool for true aficionados of the original system that it has that kind of simulated expansion port on there. They didn't have to do that. That's a nice touch. Um, incidentally, late years after that, they released the Sega 32X, which was a big mushroom top, I'm not even kidding, that plugs into here so you could plug another kind of cartridge into there, 32X games that they claimed were 32-bit. But in reality, the games didn't really look or run much better than the Genesis games did. It was just a, a gimmick to try to sell another peripheral that you really didn't need, and the games for it weren't very good. So, Sega CD and 32X, interesting that Sega tried to keep expanding upon what they were doing with this console, okay? Cardboard box tipped me a dollar and said, I'm not just a standard box, I'm made from the highest quality cardboard known to man. Of course you are. Thank you for the dollar tip. And Master Programmer just did a 400-bit cheer and said 16 bits equals 2 bytes. He's doing some math for us. So thank you, Master Programmer is currently the top cheer of the day. That 400-bit cheer. Okay. And thank you for that dollar tip. Let's up the, or update the tips total for the day. Very nice. So, what do you get with the Genesis Mini? When you get it, you get this very miniature version of the console that's about the size of a PS4 controller, okay? You get two Genesis controllers that are full-size, original Model 1 Sega Genesis controllers. You get an HDMI cable to plug it in. You get a USB power adapter, all right? And an instruction booklet. And I'm just curious. I'm going to open it. I'm sure there's nothing of any, any you know, importance in here. My hair's all screwed up. <laughs> I'm sure there's nothing of any importance in here. Let's give it a quick look since we're doing this. <clears throat> okay. So first, your, your epilepsy warnings and all of that on page one, I believe. Yes, health concerns, epilepsy warning. I was absolutely right. And then here's how to hook it up. Pretty straightforward. You got your power adapter, your HDMI adapter. So interestingly enough, the Genesis Mini does not have any audio out ports. I'm not surprised that I think that they were going to put a headphone jack or even optical out jack on this thing. Of course not. That would dramatically increase the price of it. So if you want 
any kind of audio out, you got to have it from your TV, which I already do with the Nintendo Switch, so no big deal. I'll just plug my headphones into my TV to get audio out for this thing. Not like the Genesis does surround sound or anything anyway. Not a big deal, right? Um, okay. <clears throat> so I'm just curious if there's anything in here. No. In fact, two pages of English instructions. You turn the page, and now you have a completely different language. So all this instruction booklet is is the same two pages in many different languages. And then you've got 12-month limited warranty and warranty limitations. Very exciting stuff right there. Um, at least if you're, if you're in the USA, you get that warranty. You don't. It says if you're in the UK, Europe, Australia, it's different. So you have to contact those companies. Also, Canada and Mexico have different warranties as well, apparently. Yeah. And then an FCC notice. The FCC, of course, always has to get their, their hooks into everything. And then they got their Sega website support and phone number and all of that. So there you go. All right. So very straightforward. Nothing super uh, complicated or exciting there. Um, Genesis Mini Unboxing is complete. I hope you guys liked it. I like the look of it. I, I like that they went with Model 1. They, like I said, they could have went with one of the later models. That's a completely different shape than this. Model 1 is more nostalgic for me because that's the one that I own, okay? And uh, I'm curious. I'm going to see what, what happened. We'll hook it up. We're going to check it out. All right, guys? So that's it for the unboxing. Very nice. Okay.